Welcome to SEO Lunch. You fill content in your bellies, we put content in your ears. Dan knocks his mic over about 17 yeah, times Jesus. in this episode, and we stumble through some of the headlines, but join us on SEO Lunch. Hello, everyone, and welcome to SEO Lunch, your weekly look at the world of SEO, news, you know, reviews, anything that going on with SEO, Google, things of that nature. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Matt, and we're going to switch it up on you. We're going to change SEO Lunch to be 15 minutes. Here so you go. Dan and I have 15 minutes to go over all the interesting weekly SEO topics that we found. Subscribe, please. Hit the subscribe button, solcomstudio.com slash subscribe. Today, we are going to talk about how link building really works these days, how it works from the personal level, and how it works on the client level. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Google yeah. Plus pages can now act like real people, not like Cylons, though. Yeah, not like Cylons. Frack. <laughs> and Matt, what the heck is an SEO? I don't know, but we're going to find out pretty soon. Get over yourself, Matt Cuts. Did not just kill another SEO kitten. <laughs> Oh, that Matt Cuss is at it again. And are you guys sick of seeing those what your ex taught about this why articles? We're going to get to the bottom of it, see if they really work, see if the readership really wants to see those articles anymore. And I'm a little lost on this one, the Cassandra Memorandum, Google yeah. in 2013. Hmm. We're going to yeah. take a look at that. It's a long soon. article, but we're going to put it down to bite-sized pieces for you. So uh, let's go ahead and let's just start with link building and how it's going to work for you these days. Uh, this article comes from SEO blog. Um, and what it basically does is it actually basically takes link building and breaks it down into two different types. Um, the author is a, um, or the author writing for SEO blog, obviously in the world of SEO, in the know, talks about how his personal kind of work and his personal use of SEO is completely different from when he's doing work for clients. And the reason for that, and he's saying that, you know, small businesses generally these days aren't really in the understanding of what SEO is evolving into. They still think when they're hiring somebody for SEO that it's all about link building and, you know, how my page is landing, all the SERP stuff, things like that. And what they're not realizing is that it is more getting more into social media and things like that. Yeah. I mean, was, uh, I really, really like this article yeah. uh, because it's taking uh, SEO offline uh, right. instead of just doing it online. A lot of folks don't realize right. that with all the noise, uh, this is so funny because a year ago or two years ago, it was all about social. Get on the web, push as much traffic as you possibly can, right. go, 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 get links, do all this great stuff online. But now there's just way too much noise, right? And it's, so you're always seeing this this dip effect, right? Yeah. Everything you know hits a peak and then it drops. Everything hits a peak and then it drops. Um, and building links offline is super important because now you can't just score a link anymore because a lot of these sites are run by small teams. Well, you and me. It's yeah. not just <laughs> not just some editor that you know gets lost in you know in the corporate shuffle. It's right. you have to make connections with other bloggers, other small businesses to get these links. And right. and you're really going to get these connections right. out at at, at meetings, at, uh, you know, different events, you know, being out in the real uh, public. Right. You have to work at it to get it to happen. Um, be very on a very personal, personal level um, to get this to work. And, and this personal focus is going to shift over to the next article, which is basically talking about instead of personal to personal, more business to business application. Yeah. And actually, one other takeaway from that other that other article oh, that, yeah. I, that I really liked was yeah. it, he, he states that uh, it takes half a year to prep for these kind of strategies. I mean, six months just to right. build this I, this right. plan to get to get the ball rolling. So, wow. all right, let's get to the next one. Google Plus pages yeah. can now act like real people. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> that means I can go on my Google Plus page yeah. as Slocum Studio, if you yeah. can find so us as a business, Plus, yeah. as a business, mm -hmm. uh, and then go and comment on other businesses. Right, which is which is fantastic. So, um, it's something that even Facebook isn't really doing well, mm -hmm. which is talking from business page to business page. It's always an outreach from a business to the person, mm -hmm. to the user. This is a fantastic way to basically take two businesses and get them to talk to each other, one business to a person, a person to a business, to get outreach. Um, the one thing that was interesting and the one thing that will definitely come up in the conversation here as more businesses may focus or shift to Google Plus from a Facebook due to these new changes is... Where in the past, you always had to have access to somebody's circle or be in their circle to, to send them things. Uh, now it doesn't have to be that way anymore. The business can actually comment and like or plus one in Google Plus's case, uh, somebody's post 
even when they're not in their circle. Right. So what, what do you think about that, that, that sort of invasion of privacy? Uh, I don't know if it would be an invasion of privacy more so than it is a spam thing. It's the spam thing, you know? yeah. And I think that you know now you, you might start getting businesses commenting on, hey, I heard you talked about shoes. Hi, I'm Nike. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to sell you shoes, that kind of thing, you know? Um, so, But definitely good for the small business um, organizations that want to comment on other larger businesses to right. kind of get that. You know, it's a guerrilla tactic, gray area kind of thing, but hey, it's going to work for us. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, to find out what's going to work for you, we're going to shift over to the next article, which is basically, um, you know, what the heck is an SEO? And what I think is great about this article, we were talking about it just a little bit before we filmed here, is if you are a small business and you are looking to sort of get a grasp of what SEO is, maybe you came over to us, and you're just wondering, you know, what is this? How does this apply to you? Different things like that. What are you looking for? This is a fantastic article to basically tell you what SEO is from the mouths of many industry experts and just other people in general, lots of quotations, definitions of, of what this stuff means, yeah. but from a very digestible level, mm -hmm. not like sort of, you know, tech, technical, just what's the, what's the point? What's the point of SEO? Right. And, and this is from the angle of what is it, what is, and who is an, an yeah. SEO person, right? Uh, who is a search engine optimist, yeah. <laughs> optimizer, optimizer. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, looking at what it means to be technical, what it means to be uh, creative, what it means to create content. There's a lot, a lot of stuff um, that's changing for SEO. And you're, if you're a small business, this article is kind of technical, um, but it's good to know that, look at this and kind of reverse engineer it and say, right. somebody comes to me and says they want to do SEO for me mm -hmm. and help me get more right. traffic and, and more leads and more sales. Yeah. Do they know, you know, does this person standing in front of me know this stuff that I just read? So it's a right. great way to use right. that if you're a small business and, and right. somebody comes to you. It's a great way right. to use that to kind of qualify yeah, absolutely. Uh, an SEO person. And, and the brilliant thing about this article is it starts with a prologue and it's a little bit more technical. Mm -hmm. So you sort of get into, okay, well, here's some information for you to just help you optimize your page. Oh, and by the way, it's almost like when you watch a turn on a football game in the middle of the game, get you, oh, by the way, you might've missed this stuff. And here's, you know, here's what's going on. And that's what the bottom part's for. And this is the, the tips you can use and everything like that. Um, the gentleman that writes the intro says, SEO is the practice of making it easier for site owners and their audience to find each other to meet the objectives um, and find the informational and situational needs of that audience. So about finding your target market really, really breaks down in a way that is not overly technical after he gives you the technical. Right. Uh, so good stuff there. That was uh, on Smashing Magazine's yeah. website. Uh, let's head on over to the searchenginejournal.com yeah. uh, with this article, Get Over Yourself, Matt Cutts Did Not Just Kill Another SEO Kitten. Yeah. Just a kind of... Uh, you know, baited article yeah. headline. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the kind of the takeaway yeah, from this. This is this whole art is very lengthy article. Mm -hmm. So you know, very in depth. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably too in depth for a small uh, yeah, business honestly. to have to go and consume. Yeah. But it's all about writing press release articles mm -hmm. and and how the effect of uh, they just changed how you will not get link juice anymore from right. um, you know PR news right. uh, and that kind of. Uh, press release articles. Right. Look, I mean, the whole point of that is, is they want you to create good, engaging content yeah. and create links. Yeah. A lot of people just spamming and farming out a bunch of uh, yeah. press releases. I mean, it happens, happens to us all the time. Our right. stuff is like throwing these little, I get these comments all the time. All your things have been put on the spam. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this spam press release now is sort of like something that's like, I don't want this. I don't want this. Yeah. And what Matt Cutts is saying here, the, um, the lead head of search engine optimization and whatnot for, for, for Google is web basically spam. web spam and whatnot <laughs> is he's basically saying that, um, it's not that bad press right. releases for years and years and years have happened. They're going to happen. But what he also suggests is that a real good press release is still a very, very effective tool in getting yourself seen on the internet. Right. Because I mean, because people are taking this systematic formula approach to mm -hmm. X, Y, Z equals yeah. ABC yeah, times, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> to the nth power. You know, and, right. and that's how they're that's how they're measuring traffic. You want to have pure good traffic coming to your site. They read a press release that they want to read. They're coming to your site now because they want to go to the site. Right. And now it's your job as an SEO or as a small business convert this person to a customer or a potential lead or a newsletter. And that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's absolutely. A, you know, quality full circle thing. Yeah, getting personal. We talked about in the other articles just before this getting that connection, building leads, getting yourself on these press releases, because that's really going to be the best way in the future. I mean, last week's episode, we talk about, you know, what's going to happen in 2013 with algorithms. Are we going to leave algorithms? Are we going to go social completely or mostly social? At least there's always going to be some form of right. 
of, of link building to a degree at least. Um, are we going to go more social? If so, this is where it's really going to be important for you as a business to have yourself seen on as many different, you know, avenues as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and to not do anything, you know, too kind of samey, uh, and get, get yourself sort of in your own, in your own place here. Um, and with that in mind, we talk about, um, these posts that people, you know, that article right there is perfect evidence with the Matt cuts right in the title. Uh, now we're talking about what your ex taught me about why post actually taught me. Um, and this is from Michael J. Kovas, his blog. Uh, and what it basically says is the essential takeaway from here is, um, get creative, not, not necessarily too creative, but get creative because as readership, just like anything else, there's just this burnout on the internet these days where you go online, um, you know, and, and you search for like pizza or something. And instead of getting pizza because you're hungry, you get, you know, an article about pizza or, you know, how, you know, how, how, how pizza was created or something like that. Right. Um, what this is saying, he put it perfectly. He says, um, <laughs> what keeping up with the Kardashians taught me about, you know, uh, pay per click. There's, there's no, there's no yeah, correlation there's, here, there's no correlation. but there's so much of that online. Right. So he's talking about getting this to sort of be a little bit more relevant. Yeah. It's like a call to action <laughs> for SEOers yeah. in the industry to stop, you know, don't correlate, you know, like Kim Kardashian to, yeah. you know, pizza or something. Yeah. You yeah. Know, just, it's just perfect bait and switch yeah, maneuvers. It's just bait and switch. Somebody searches keeping up with the Kardashians because they want to watch last week's episode. And yeah. now they're reading about search engine optimization. And right. Like, digital content marketing or yeah, something. Yeah, if you, know? you were if you were, I don't know, if you had a landscape company and you uh, wrote an article about the new iPhone. Right. Totally irrelevant. Yeah, totally completely you, irrelevant. You, to what you wanted to just do. you just wanted to grab tra some of the traffic right. to your blog and you know it doesn't really matter. Now, if you wrote an article about using the iPhone right. to take photos of your landscape to further your business, further needs. your business, um, or landscape apps, or how you right. organize your landscape company right. uh, with an iPhone. That would be relevant, right. but not not a review of, yeah. of, of like iOS and, six, right? And don't call it what my iPhone five taught me about construction, right? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> All right, last article: uh, the Cassandra Memorandum, Google in two thousand and thirteen. Mm -hmm. This is a very uh, High-end article, probably yeah. uh, a little too much for the small business right. uh, to need to consume. But there are some takeaways, and the takeaways are Google's changing. We talked about that in the in the last episode. SEO is changing. Right. Um, and we talk about how Google uses schema.org. Yeah. What the heck is schema.org? Yeah. In plain, simple terms, I'm going to yeah, probably sure. get yelled at for this, but it's like <laughs> a template for your information on your site. Sure. Very, very open-ended way to describe that if you had a your business location or you had a menu or you had a review mm -hmm. um, on your site schema.org provides kind of like this template of how you structure that right so that google can find it and organize it properly on the search results uh authorship yeah. again we talked about this in the last episode connecting your pretty little picture to your blog article so that people will see a human behind that search result. Right, as opposed to just right. spam and whatever. Yeah, else, search like result shows up. Or, yeah. It says your title written by Matt with a photo, and it goes to my Google Plus profile. Yeah, and there it is. And then what does that lead to? That leads to Google Plus, yeah. right? So that's the other big thing that's changing in, in Google. Everything's getting filtered through Google Plus. They want you to connect your account to as many other social sites as possible. Yeah. Uh, in this recent article they had in this recent wrap up, we had the businesses can now comment on Google plus yeah. pages and stuff like that. Um, too big to fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. In Google's case here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they want you to start, uh, creating useful content. Uh, you know, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what we just talked right. about. Um, that's why it's all changing. There's some other high level or uh, high, high level stuff in there, but, uh, for the small business, uh, just know that there are things that you can do beyond the link building, beyond the keywords, uh, beyond content creation. Right. Um, that's going to change. So that is a wrap. That's just right. under 14 there minutes, Dan. Not bad for our first try. There we go. All right, everybody. Nailed this it. has been the SEO Lunch, your bite-sized portion uh, in under 15 <laughs> minutes of lunch of SEO during your lunch break, hopefully. <laughs> if you liked it, which I got, I don't know why you would at this point, <laughs> hit subscribe. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get more of this stuff in your inbox, slocumstudio.com slash subscribe. Check us out. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.